Uh, greetings, Work From Home Conf. Uh, my name is Matthew Fowle. I'm here to talk today a little bit about some of my adventures in trying to blog and get myself online. Uh, I've had some ongoing projects for quite a while to try and build a better blog presence, and it sounds like a pretty prosaic task, but I think that uh, there's an interesting lesson here about looking at file changes and sending file changes and capturing the changes that we're making as we're going. Um, so just to quickly review the to introduce the problem, um, I mean, thank you, first of all, I guess, for uh, attending here at Work From Home Conf. It's great to see all of you. Um, a lot of great talks today. Um, I'm going to go through a couple different parts of this talk. Uh, we're going to quickly look at the main service that I use to work through all of the utilities that I'm using, which is a service from Facebook that you can see up on the screen in front of you, um, Watchman. And that's how I'm able to effectively look for files changing on my file system. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the programs that I wrote, which uh, are using this Watchman system to first look at changes that are happening on my file system and then building commits automatically from the changes that I'm making, um, good commits, and then pushing those changes up to a server. Uh, and this is all part of a, there's, there's still a lot of work in progress, but this is all part of the idea of like having a nice continuous integration cycle where I can be editing live on my system, I can be making changes, um, I could be adding to a document and having those changes replicated asynchronously but quickly up to a central place and have those have that data, have that information be able to be published. Um, so that has the value of being able to make the information that I'm generating, the things that are happening on my local system, have an effectively simultaneous effect on the world to be able to get out there quickly. Um, so it's a really fast channel for data to get out there, which is one thing that was really interesting to me. And then the second reason that I wrote this, that this whole suite of tools was interesting to me was because this suite of uh, the capability here is also that it's by um, the, the particular capability I was interested in is whenever I make changes, I want to be able to have that change saved as a commit immediately. I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to process it. I don't have to go out and build a commit. I want to be able to build an incremental list of changes to the things I'm doing and have many, 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 many different Git changes in my Git history, which later I might be want, want to go back and rebase. But that should give me a better view of the history of what I've been up to, what I've been doing, give me some way to go refresh sort of my writing process and my writing style and be able to see how things are changing. So this isn't just for source code, although it definitely helps for being able to track changes to source code. Um, the project that I worked on today and that I want to share with all of you, and I hope that you two are excited to hear a little bit of as well, um, is about also being able to see kind of the changes over time, um, the, the like small changes to style and what's happening. Um, so, uh, the tool that I used, I initially launched this project, um, th this attempt to like uh, make a git auto commit system by just using my own file watchers. But I stumbled upon this great utility, Watchman, uh, which is a very, very well supported GitHub project uh, that has really like, it has a nice API based system. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of users. <laughs> uh, it's a nice API-based system for being able to do file watching. So there's two different main modes of operation for Watchman. You can use it as a command line utility. Um, it has a bunch of different watch operations, things like triggers, um, so that when something changes, Watchman can go and do actions. I'm not super familiar with the command line utility, to be honest. My main interest is really in being able to use Watchman from an API perspective and figure out how to get in, make, make use of this facility. Um, and that's really where the second part of Watchman comes in super strong. It's a really interesting um, uh, suite of capabilities in Watchman, which is that it has a really good API server with a really good, it has both a JSON API serialization, serialization, so you can talk to it in JSON and ask it to watch projects. You can ask it to watch specific pieces of projects. Um, there's a very sophisticated uh, um, expression system for telling Watchmen what kind of things you want to look at and what kind of things you don't want to look at. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but you can either tell it over JSON, and it also has uses BSER, which is a binary serialization format that it also supports. So using these two, you can open a socket connection to it and tell it, hey, I want to watch these things. And when this daemon, which is super well optimized, super well tuned, sees these changes, it will reply back on the API and tell you, I've got these changes for you. Here it is. 
And at that point, you can have your program, whatever's on the other end, start to pick up and listen for these changes. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty common operation. I think that watching files is something I think developers are pretty familiar with. But uh, I, I think there's a neat innovation here in the generalness of this utility, that it's a generic utility that uh, can has a very wide capability and set of tools available for it. Um, more so that, so rather than have to go build incremental pieces, it has a lot of different things built in that save you a lot of time from working on. Second, it's really well tuned, which I think is a super great capability. Um, it just runs very fast, very effectively. And third, uh, if you have multiple different things watching, since there's a common API available to them, a common API, a common service serving these requests, multiple watches do not have extra performance penalty on top of it. So in this way, you get a lot of extra efficiency. Um, we're going to start diving into Watchman. We should end up, this should be a pretty quick dive through. Um, hopefully, we'll get to my source code very quickly here. Thank you very much for uh, <laughs> watching along with me. Um, just to get a general sense of uh, the, the utility, um, the, uh, there's a bunch of different like configuration options available to it. Um, the main ones, the main thing about it is that it has, uh, there's kind of the two modalities of operation of either a, a client mode or a spawn mode where it's kind of running one-off commands. And then there's a persistent mode where it starts its own server. Uh, and, and you're really talking to a server even when you're using the command line interface. Um, and we can see a little bit about um, talking about the input and output. Uh, you're really just piping, for input and output, you're really just piping short commands into the socket of uh, little pieces of JSON to issue a watch to a certain directory. So it's really a very simple protocol. Um, it's really easy to debug and watch what's happening with this protocol. Um, but that said, there's great APIs available for it. So that's really, I think, my main interest again. Um, I'd hope to spend a little bit more time looking through and getting more familiar with the command line interface and being able to really demonstrate how I would use the command line interface to be able to make git commits when things change, which is my personal goal of what I wanted out of this. But I ran a little short on time, so we're going to dive more into the source code, which is more fun anyway. I hope you'll agree. Um, I do want to look a little bit at the commands, though, because the commands are really the defining capabilities of what, excuse me. The commands are really the defining capabilities of what makes Watchman. So the starting point is really watching a project. Uh, Watchman has an idea. It's looking for certain things that it calls like root files that define like this is the starting directory that I'm going to watch from here down out. So it looks for .git directories. It looks for .hg directories. It looks for directories with a .watchman config file. Um, and those are kind of, if you ask for a file, it's going to kind of walk up the directory tree until it meets one of those things. And it says, oh, this is my project. I'm going to start watching from this project. Um, and so once you have a project watch, uh, that comes back with a simple reply of this is what it's watching. So we can see. Uh, if we ask Watchman to watch this particular project, if we ask, ask Watchman to watch uh, this particular directory, when it comes back, it's going to tell us that we have a watch issued for this directory, since that's where it found the .hg file. Um, and then it will give us a relative path to the specific subdirectory there under. Uh, and so doo -doo -doo. Um, the watch is kind of the starting place, and the other big command that we have to, that where data really starts coming back to us, where we start seeing what the changes are coming back, uh, there's a subscribe command. There's a bunch of other commands here. They have a bunch of interesting capabilities, um, but subscribe is the one where you, uh, given your watch, you already have an existing watch, you can issue a subscribe uh, to that watch with a name, and then it allows you to specify this expression with a pretty ex powerful expression syntax. Um, expression format that allows you to, to kind of build specific things that you want to look for. And so Watchman will then start issuing you back the changes that are happening from this. Um, so with all that said, let's go start looking at some of the source code, uh, some of the source code that I've gotten up, up to in my project. So this project is git auto commit. Uh, git auto commit um, the whole goal of git auto commit, this is very short read me, um, <laughs> automatically make git commits as the file system changes. So uh, that's really the goal here. Um, and if we, uh, if we dive right in and start, let's just take a quick tour through the source code here, and then we'll watch it. And I guess let's go the other way. Let's watch it in operation and then uh, uh, 
then we will look through the source code. Okay, so up top, we're going to run the git auto commit daemon. Uh, it starts up with a little bit of a message just to tell you, hi, I'm running. Here's the parameters that I have. Um, we can already see something that we just talked about. We can see an expression here that we're going to be using uh, within this directory. Um, the idea is that this utility should be able to be used in any directory, but right now I'm using it right here uh, <coughs> in this current directory. Um, so the idea is like if this was a, a directory that had like a bunch of blogging files, which is something that I usually blog into a git directory file, um, I could be starting a, uh, starting a little text file. So I just wrote this little file and then I saved it. And we can see that as soon as I saved it, we got a new entry here that showed up on the screen. Um, so it automatically knew that there was a new entry here. Um, and if we go quit out of this file, and then let's do a, a little git log to see what happened, uh, we can see, hey, look, there's a commit from right now. Uh, so if we, and if we, in that, uh, if we look at that commit, uh, if we look at that, ooh, I guess I must have had some additional. That really shouldn't be in there. Is outstanding. I don't think I'm looking at my. My git foo is not quite up to par. Um, so the actual change is uh, right here. Um, if we're just diffing, this is what should be in that commit there. Um, so we set, we can see that this was automatically able to add sense that this new file was here and it was able to make a new commit for it. Um, so if we go edit the file again. Save and quit. Uh, we should be able to just see again that now there's another commit. Again, uh, one from just before and one from right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure why the date is showing the same date because that should be changing. Um, but uh, the <laughs> um, I'm using a. We'll get into that. I think that might be. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll look at that. Um, but the, the point is, though, is that uh, Git log is showing us these changes as I'm making them. It's automatically taking the content that I'm writing and building commits for it. So this is really giving me like a more persistent, immutable form of, uh, like, I really think of this as like an immutable data structure for my writing. Like, rather than relying on me manually going and building, uh, like, commits and me capturing my own data. I'm kind of using the save capability to be able to take snapshots over time. And then I'll be able to have like all of the different history of my data that I can scrub through as I'm writing to be able to go look forward and backwards in time. So I thought that was like a super interesting capability and I was super interested in sharing it with you all. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a, a little bit under the wire that everything came together, but uh, this is working. And let's go take a quick look at what the source code looks like for this. So I'm gonna close this terminal. Um, and this is the git auto commit program. Um, it's pretty short. I, um, we're just going to step through it really quickly. Uh, first off, we pull out a couple of options, which uh, are just the data that we need to run it. The watch directory is whatever directory we're going to look at, which is probably the current working directory. The watch expression is uh, whatever the, the um, like whatever special filter we're going to be using to look at stuff. Um, and then we, right away, we, we log our current settings, and then we run this watchman client, um, which is a, a node module or a JavaScript module that's able to talk to the watchman server that's running on my system. Um, from, the, from that watchman client, uh, it has a suite of capabilities. We immediately use it to call watch project, which is that watch project command that we just looked at over in this window. Uh, 
from watch project that gives us that project that we have. Um, and then uh, this is just a, like the, this command gets us some of the data back from that watch project command um, that we can use that data later. But the real action happens here on this next line. We're almost done with this file. It's almost done. Um, <laughs> this is the whole thing. Uh, the next change that ha the next thing that we go to is we start, we subscribe to the changes on that project. Um, so just as we talked about before, once you have a watch, you can start to issue these subscribes um, and we give it a, uh, a randomly generated ID just to give Watchman something to hang on to. Um, and then we give it the expression that we were looking for. And that's it. Uh, there's a little bit at the end here, this since, uh, we can talk about that shortly. Um, and then once we have this thing, this is an async iterator pattern. So it's opening a socket to the Watchman server. Uh, the Watchman server hears this command and then it starts over, that, over the socket sending data back at us. Uh, as it becomes available, as this information becomes available. Um, and then the library, this Watchman client library, is turning that into an async iterator. So we can use a for await statement just to listen to these lists of changes as they're coming back uh, from this subscribe. And that makes it a super easy interface to be able to use this Watchman client uh, system. Um, and we can see like here we're logging out those changes as they come in and then uh, we're using this wonderful isomorphic Git library, which uh, it allows us to, we do a um, Git, so part of these changes uh, is going to be the file, like these is a list of the files that are changing. And we can issue a Git add to be able to go add that file into our Git repository. We wait for all of those Git adds to complete, and then we send a commit to make this commit happen. Um, and so that is really the whole project that it actually took to go implement uh, this particular capability, which allows me to get myself way better online. Um, and then uh, and then there's a reciprocal program, git auto push, which does nearly the same thing. It uses a slightly different watch expression. Um, but uh, uh, so this is the config. We're going to take a quick look at the config file. Um, we can see the wash expression. We'll put these side by side. Um, sorry, there's a some workspace data that needs to be cleared out. So this is for the git auto commit. This is the watch expression that we're using. Um, there's a, we can see that it's kind of a tree shaped structure. There's an outer out all of bracket. So it, it's going to be, this expression is like some sort of filter. Whenever a change comes in, it needs to make it through whatever this filter says for it to be able to actually get sent back over the wire. So all love is going to say each of these conditions has to pass. And then if we look at all of the first thing we see is a file condition. So uh, it's a uh, Watchman is only going to tell us about files that are changing. Um, and then we want to make sure that it is not, a, we don't want to know about anything that's inside of the Git directory for the Git auto commit. Um, so as we're making commits, we don't want to be trying to add um, new data. Uh, so we ignore Git commits. And then um, just for my own sake, I'm ignoring things that end in SWP and ending node modules things um, just to reduce the amount of data changes that are happening to check in, to not check in things that I don't want to check in. Um, and then on this side is the git auto push uh, project. So it has a different watch, watch expression. Um, instead of watching for files that are changing inside of the project directory, as is on this side, uh, the git auto push utility, which is trying to build commits to just trying to push commits up to a GitHub server or a Git server, um, the Git auto push utility is only going to be looking for changes to a Git directory. Um, <coughs> and this highlights, this kind of highlights one of the cool also additional features of Watchmen is that it has a bit of a debouncing and a delaying capability built into it. So normally when you're making changes to add a git commit, there's a whole bunch of changes that are happening within your .git directory. There's new objects being created, there's new heads being created. Um, so there's a, a flurry of activity. And um, git 
uh, the Watchman daemon already has a built-in bit of delay to make sure that it can kind of wrap up changes. It also has a whole bunch of savvy. So you can ask for, uh, we mentioned earlier uh, um, that there was a, I'm going to close out these inputs. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there was, when we were building the subscribe, when we we're finally issuing the subscribe, one of the capabilities in subscribe that we sent as a parameter, change my wrap settings here, uh, is this since parameter. Um, the since parameter has a quite a bunch of flexibility when you're subscribing. So you can subscribe to since in terms of a sense of time. You can say uh, the the Watchman daemon not only will send you changes, I think I believe it also has an ability to kind of understand backwards changes. So you can use the Watchman daemon to resume from a point in time and get changes since a point in time forward. Um, you can also ask it for changes since a certain git commit, uh, excuse me, since a certain mercurial commit. Um, git support is, they say, not that hard to ask, but they are happy to accept patches upstream for it. Uh, so um, perhaps someday you or I might go work on that. Um, so this, this sense capability has quite a bunch of interesting capabilities. I mean, it's part of what makes Watchmen a really interesting tool suite that goes well above and beyond what using sort of your standard watch libraries might give you. Um, uh, da -da -da. Um, sorry, pardon me. Uh, I think the remaining thing to do here, the remaining task, um, I have a quick introduction to sort of the utility that I wrote. Um, we'll take a quick look at some of the, the Node.js API that is available to uh, that that is part of the Watchman daemon. Um, ah, here we are, we go. Um, so this is kind of the built-in Watchman API that's available. And it's a very classic Node.js API style. Um, it, it relies almost entirely on callbacks. Um, one of the first things you kind of do when you're connecting is you run a capability check to make sure that the required features are there. Um, and that kind of gives you some background connect that gives you some idea that you're like running a reasonable server. But we can see like right away that this is built in a um, pattern where it's issuing us a uh, has a callback that we're getting back data from um, with this either error or response object. Uh, and then we can s start to see some of the other things that we've been doing of um, their API that they have for the project is they're issuing a watch project via a generic command utility. And that again comes back with a callbacks with it. Um, so this was a great library. It was uh, I'm using it internally, but I wrote a little wrapper for it to be able to kind of speed up and accelerate my development to get me um, things like the asynchronous iteration. Um, so that was another that was uh, another like fun piece of time I had uh, was writing Watchman client. Uh, so just a super quick glance at Watchman client. Um, well, I, it's again using this Node.js implementation uh, for Facebook Watchman. Um, I believe there's there's some use of sockets, but other than use of sockets, um, almost everything in this library is just pure JavaScript. So this is something that could conceivably be ported to the web and used on the web if there were some way to talk to the daemon. Um, I, that was definitely part of trying to keep that usefulness was definitely um, I thought that was a great capability that it wasn't using a whole lot of the node libraries. Um, Watchman client is just a really simple, like all Watchman client is really doing is exposing a, a watch project capability. 
Um, there's a couple other things that it wraps. It wraps the capability check. It wraps, um, I, I guess that's all it really wraps right now, but it's useful for starting getting a, issuing a watch project and watch project gets you a project, which is what we talked about. Um, so uh, the, the uh, um, a straight project and a project is going to require a path. You're going to have, it's going to have a different, a number of different subscriptions underneath it. Um, and it needs the watchman client to be able to do its work. And from that, once we have those things available, uh, we can either call clock to kind of get the current state of the project, figure out what the current wall clock is for the project, um, or we can subscribe to that project. And once we start subscribing, that ultimately comes down to giving us a new subscribe object. Uh, we can kind of see um, this is responsible for building what the subscription is going to be, and this is going to have the different parameters that we've been talking about. Uh, so there's a, a fields object for it. Uh, there's a relative path object for a subscribe. Um, and let's go flip over to the documentation to go look at those real quick. This index disappears unless I uh, shrink it down. So um, 